Okay, today we're looking at section 4.8, solving equations with fractions. So to solve equations with fractions, it basically works the same as solving a normal equation. You can add the same to both sides and it's not going to change the solution. You can subtract the same thing from both sides, it doesn't change. Divide or multiply the same thing by both sides, it doesn't change the solution. We're just working with fractions rather than numbers like two or four. And we always, as usual, have to check our solution in the original equation. <clears throat> so let's look at some examples here. Let's say we have, uh, where's my little thing? There it is. X minus three fourths equals one sixth. Okay, so how would we do this normally? Well, what if we had insta instead say X minus three equals six? Well, we would just add three to both sides and then X would equal nine and that would be our answer. And then we could check it back in and say nine minus three is six, that is equal to six, so that works. And so that's what we do with normal numbers. Now with fractions, we're just gonna have fractions to deal with. So we're gonna say, well, we're gonna add three fourths to both sides. And so then X equals, but now we can't just add one six and three fourths, we have to actually get the common denominator and add them together. So let's go ahead and write those as one six plus three-fourths. Now we need to find the LCD. Well, six is two times three, and four is two times two. So we're going to use two twice, so it'll be two times two, and then we also have a three, so times three. And so two times two is four, times three is twelve, so our LCD is twelve. So then <clears throat> that means we're going to have one over six times two over two, plus three over four times three over three. And so that's gonna be equal to two over 12 plus nine over 12. And so then X is equal to 11 over 12 as far as our answer goes. So that is our solution to this equation. Now we have to check it. Does 11 over 12 minus three over four equal one over six. <clears throat> well, we're gonna get the LCD, and again, the LCD is gonna be the same for this one as it is for the other one, so we're gonna take 11 over 12 minus three over four times three over three equals one over six times two over two. So 11 over 12 minus nine over 12 is equal to two over 12. Well, 11 minus nine is two over 12, and that equals two over 12, so that does check. And so that's how we're gonna use uh, our normal solving equations, adding, subtracting both sides, dividing, multiplying both sides of the equation, and getting to our solution. So let's look at another one. Let's say <clears throat> we have three over seven times y equals six over 17, okay? Well, what are we gonna do? Well, we have a fraction times a number equals another number. What if we had had, say, um, two y uh, equals six, okay? Well, we would have multiplied by the reciprocal, so we would have multiplied by one over two, and multiplied that by one over two, because remember, two is just one over, two over one, and six, well, that's six over one. <clears throat> so now when we multiply that, we just get y equals, now six over one times one over two, well, we can reduce that to just three. So is two times three equal to six? Yeah, so that would check. Well, so the same thing here. Since we had here two over one, well, what if we multiply both sides now by the reciprocal here? Seven over three, seven over three. Well, here three cancels three, seven cancels seven, and we have y equals. Well, now here, three will go in here once, that'll go in here twice. So we have two times seven, which is 14, all over 17 times one, which is 17. And so that would be our solution. Now our check is going to be three over seven times 14 over 17. And that's supposed to be equal to six over 17. Well, seven will go in here once, it'll go in here twice. Three times two is six, and one times 17 is 17. And that's supposed to be a 17, not a 16. Don't know where I got that. 
And so then it shows us that then both sides are equal. So that's 17 and that's 6 over 17 <clears throat> and that's equal so it does check out. Okay, so I'll do more examples on, on the example set, but that, that's what we're doing there as far as solving our equations. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be able to clear fractions from the equations from the start, and then we can simplify the equations. And so what we're going to do is we're going to basically multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD of all the fractions that appear in the equations. So, <clears throat> for example, if we would have... Uh, say t minus 3 over 7 equals negative 4 over 5. Well, what is our LCD here? Well, we've got a 7 and we've got a 5, so that means we're just going to have to take 7 times 5, which is equal to 35. Now, that's our LCD, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that. So we'll take 35 times t minus 3 over 7. And that's equal to 35 times negative 4 over 5. So now we have to distribute here. And then here we just can cancel. So 35 times t, well that's 35t. And then 35 times that's going to be minus 35 times 3 over 7. And that's equal to, well here we can go ahead and multiply that. Well 5, we'll cancel here once, and 7. So we have 7 times negative 4, so that's a negative 28. And here, before we go further, we can reduce 7 going here once, 7 going here 5 times. So we have 35t minus 15 equals minus 28. So now, back to solving a normal equation, we add 15 to both sides. So 35t is equal to, and we take 8 minus 5 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, and it's going to be a negative. So now we solve, that's divide by 35. And so we find that t is equal to negative 13 over 35. And that would be our answer. And then if we went back and checked it to our equation, we'd have to get the LCD and, and make sure it all worked. But that does work as far as our answer goes. So I'm not going to show the checks on everyone, but that would be what our answer is. What if we had instead, say, something like... 3 over 5y plus 3 over 4 equals 2 over 3. <clears throat> All right, so here our LCD is going to be, well, 5 is 1 and 5, 4 is 2 and 2, 3 is 1. So we're going to have basically 5 times 2 times 2 times 3. Well, what's that equal to? Well, 5 times 4 is 20 times 3 is equal to 60. So what we need to do is multiply both sides by the 60. So take 60 times 3 fifths y plus 3 fourths equals 60 times 2 thirds. Well, I'm going to distribute here. So we'll have 60 times 3 fifths y plus 60 times 3 fourths equals 60 times 2 thirds. All right, well, 5 will go in here once. 5 will go in here 12 times. 4 will go in here once, and it'll go in here 15 times. 3 will go in here once, and it'll go in here 20 times. So now we've got 12 times 3, which is 36y, plus 15 times 3, which is 45, equals 20 times 2, that's 40. Now, if we subtract 45, we have 36y equals a minus 5. Where did the 6 go? Now, divide by 36. And so we get y equals a minus 5 over 36. And again, plugging that back in will give us the correct answer. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a few uh, application type problems. So attendance for a community college game was 12,252. If this was three-fifths of capacity, what is the capacity of the gym? All right, so what, what does that tell us? Well, it says that 
you know, three fifths of capacity. So let's say X equals capacity. So three fifths times X, and that's going to be equal to what we found here, 12,252. So all we have to do to solve for x is multiply here by the reciprocal to get rid of the 3 fifths. So we multiply by 5 over 3. Multiply by 5 over 3. Now <clears throat> what we can do is we can divide. We can take 12,252 divided by 3. And then after we do that, then we can multiply that by 5. And it will be a lot easier to do, I think. So we'll take 12,252 divided by 3. So that'll go in there four times, that's 12. Subtract that, that's zero. Bring down our two, that's a zero. Bring now down our five. And so if we put an eight there, that's gonna be 24. Subtract, that's one, two, and that's gonna be a four again. And so now we have to take four, zero, eight, four times our five. So four times five is 20. Now eight times five is 40 plus two is 42. And with a zero that brings it there and then five times four is 20. And so what we find is X equals 20,420 uh, people is the capacity. Okay. Now again, if we wanted to determine if this is correct, what we could do is we could divide that number by five and then multiply it by three. And when we do that, we'll find that we get 12,252 as our answer. And so that does check out. So that would be uh, the solution here. That would be our capacity. All right. And again, what you're doing is three fifths of, remember of means times, capacity we don't know, that's X. And that was equal to the total number, 12,252. And that's how we got our equation. Now here we say the area of a triangle is 609 square feet. If the base of the triangle measures 50 and 3 quarters feet, find the height of a triangle. Well, let's look at a triangle again, what we have. So that's the height. The base is this. Well, we said the base was 50 and 3 quarters feet. We don't know H, and we know area is 609 feet squared, okay? Well, what do we know about the actual area of a triangle? Well, that's one half of base times height. So we know the base, we know the area, and the only thing left is height. So now we just solve. So 609 equals one half the base, which is 50 and 3 fourths, times h. All right, now when we're multiplying and dividing, we have to convert these to improper fractions. So 50 and 3 fourths, when you multiply that, that's going to be 203 over 4. So that's going to end up being 609 equals uh, 1 half times 203 over 4 times h. Now, the nice thing here is 1 times that is going to just be 203. 2 times 4 is 8. That's times h. That's still 609. Now we have a fraction times h. So if we multiply by the reciprocal, we should get rid of the fraction. And so because that will cancel that, that will cancel that. And so we have h left on the right. Now, this is really over 1. Now, 203 goes into 609. It's really nice. If you think about that, if you multiply that by 3, 3 times that's 9, 0, 6. So this will go in here once. That will go in here 3 times. Now we just have 8 times 3. So that's 24. So that ends up being a nice number. So our height is equal to 24 feet. And then what we could do is if we wanted to check, we could go ahead and multiply that in here again. So if we take 24, divide it by 2, that's 12, times this, that should give us the 609. And if we do that check, it will work. Again, I'm leaving that to you, the student. 
All right, and let's do one more type of uh, problem here. It says the three and one half mile long Union Pacific train is about two and one half times the length of a typical freight train. How long is a typical freight train? All right, so let's say X equals length of typical freight train. And so what do we have? Well, two and one half times the length of a typical freight train. So two and one half times X is equal to how long this one is, three and one half. Okay. Well, again, multiplying and dividing fractions, we need to have improper fractions. So we'll convert this to improper fractions. So two times two is four plus one. So that's five halves X equals, here we have two times three is six plus one is seven halves. Now we just have to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by two over five. So we do the same thing on the other side. Well, nicely, our twos cancel here and well, everything cancels over here. So we just get X equals, and then we get seven over five, and it's gonna be in miles. But because we started out with mixed fractions, we have to kind of end in mixed fractions. And so we're gonna take five into seven. Well, that goes once, and so that's a five. Subtract that, that's two. And so this is two fifths. So this is one and two fifths miles is a typical freight train, okay? All right, so that finishes 4.8. And if you need more examples, I'll do an example video as well.